Okay, sorry, so today we're going to demonstrate how to use sterile technique to, as part of the core practical to make sure that we are transferring bacteria, okay, is the first demonstration. And the second demonstration is setting up the practical, we're going to see how they are affected by antibiotics. So the technicians have already done some work for you. These are two, these are agar plates. This one's a plain plate, which I'm going to be using where it's just agar, which is just this extract of seaweed. This plate here has been pre-seeded with bacteria. Now how they make these, you need to be aware of as well, and it's on the handout. They take agar powder and they mix it with water. It's a bit like making uh, jelly, okay? You take the powder, you mix it with water, okay? You put it in an autoclave. Does anyone know what an autoclave is? It's a posh name for something. Something that people might use for cooking a steak and kidney pie or something. Anyone know? Yeah? No? Well, for the other bit, yeah, go on. It's like a pressure cooker. It's basically a pressure cooker, that's all it is. It gets to 120 degrees, which you can do under pressure. So it's a pressure cooker, and the pressure cooker basically heats it up, sterilizes it. We allow it to cool, okay, and then we allow it to uh, cool enough to get about 40 degrees before it sets, and then we put the bacteria in. If you put the bacteria in too early, then it will. Uh, kill the bacteria. So that's how they're made. So they're bacteria already in this one. So it's really important with all of these that you are careful how you deal with them. These are stored upside down. So you're wondering why they're upside down. Well, they're upside down. This side, and this is often a confusion on people, this bit here, okay, is the bottom and it's got the jelly in it. This is the lid. So when you're doing this, don't put the things on the lid because a lot of people get mistaken and put it into the right place. So, simple Bunsen burner safety. Make sure your uh, Bunsen's attached well. Before we turn the Bunsen burner on, I'm going to just spray down the bench and wipe it off with a bit of kitchen roll, just to make sure that it's sterile. Okay, so we want to make sure the area around here is sterile. So you'll do that. This is just uh, Dettol. If you used ethanol, you'd have to make sure you did it before you turn the Bunsen burner on. That's a safety problem. So making sure you kept ethanol away. This isn't ethanol though, it's just basically a bleach, uh, kind of a bleach solution, okay? Then we're gonna check Bunsen burner is closed, on the rings closed. Have our light ready, and you'll be able to light from here using the splint, so you'll be able to get your lights from the front. And we're also gonna be wearing goggles when we do this. And, get to lit up. Okay. Now, what this Bunsen burner is doing is it's creating an envelope of hot air. It's not hot here, but there's hot air here. So anything that drops down is going to get basically cooked by the flame. Okay? And we're going to put this on to our hot flame. It's really important, Bunsen burner safety, you at no times walk away from the flame while it's on this. While at university I actually was doing a practical just like this, and it's quite easy to forget it's there and put your hand for it. I actually put my arm for it and burnt my arm doing that. So it's quite easy because it's actually transparent. So, first one is, I'm gonna do something you're not gonna do. I'm gonna show you sterile technique of how I'm gonna transfer some bacteria that have been growing in this culture. This is called Bacillus subtilis. And I'm gonna transfer this to this plate to create what's called a street plate, just so you can see bacteria growing. And I'm gonna do it in a way which tries to minimize the chance of anything contaminating either the plate or this. And usually most things that contaminate will be bacteria or, uh, bacteria or mold spores that are dropped in from the air. The other piece of equipment I'm using, well you won't be using this, is I'm just gonna use a bacterial loop. It's a sort of loop here. And to sterilize anything, I'm just gonna pass it through. You see the flame has a triangle. You wanna aim for the top of the triangle, which is here, okay? So I'm just gonna pass that through like this. And that's sterile now. Now, this is very a, a bit of technique. This is the sort of thing you'd learn if you're a microbiologist, being able to do things in one hand. So I've actually, if one hand, I've undone the lid, okay, and moved it to one side, or with one hand while still holding this, I'm not putting anything down. So I've just left that to core for a while, because otherwise I'll just cook anything I touch. And I put that in. Notice the way I'm holding this. I'm holding it at an angle. I'm not holding it straight up, and I'm holding everything under the Bunsen flame. So I go in. Put the loop in, and what I've got is a loop of liquid now, okay, and I'm going to actually do it back up, one-handed. Okay, now I take the plate, turn it the right way up, 
and I'm only going to open the plate enough for me to do what I want to do. So I'm going to put that in here and I'm going to create a streak. So I'm just going to streak backwards and forwards and then I'm going to turn the plate around and I'm going to streak a bit more and I'm going to turn the plate around and I'm going to streak a bit more. And why I keep streaking it is so that it gets more and more dilute. So I'm going to have lots of bacteria in one place and it's getting more and more dilute. Eventually what will happen when this grows is you'll get individual colonies of bacteria that you can see. Now this is what people do when they're testing your water or they're testing your McDonald's or they're testing other things to see if it's got bacteria in. And they'll later take this and they will then analyse it to see what bacteria it is. So you're not going to do that, that's just for me. I'm then going to take this, I'm going to take a Celotec dispenser and I'm going to get two bits of tape, quite long, and I'm going to put the tape over the top like this in a cross, not all the way around. So do not put it all the way around because that will stop air getting to it and you'll get nasty bacteria called anaerobic bacteria growing. So that's done. Once you've completed it, you can actually then put it back upside down. This one oh, should label it as well. We've got some pens here. What we're going to start by doing is we're going to start by taking a marker pen and on the base, not on the lid, there's a reason we don't do it on the lid, because the lid goes around. We're going to divide it into four quadrants. So, that's shaky. Divide it into four quadrants, you're going to label them P1.5, P5, P10. Don't write it too big, by the way, because it'll block out what you're doing. And C for control. So we've got three strengths of pelicinin. And those pelicinin are in these things that look like PEZ dispensers. We've only got three of them, so it's important that we are patient as this goes around. That's 10, that's 1.5, and that's 5. All you've got to do is you've got to take your forceps, and I'll turn this over now. Okay. Take your forceps, put the forceps into the flame. Again, not for too long. If you hold it there for long, you actually the heat will travel up and you'll actually burn your fingers. That's that long. Okay. Then just push lightly on the dispenser and it'll just push out one of the discs. Take the disc, hold on to it, only open the Petri dish enough to put the disc in and place it right at the centre of that quadrant and it will stick there. At this point it's important to make sure you're doing it the right way up, onto the jelly, not onto the lid, because I've seen people do that. So I turn it around, I take the next one, this is where you're going to need to pass these on. So basically you're going to have a line going around the classroom. <coughs> take another one, this is the 10 actually. Yeah, that's the 10. So let's put that in the right place. That's the 10. Each time you do this, you should re-sterilize the forceps. And then the five. <laughs> and last of all, in these little jars here are sterile pieces of paper which are just going to be your control. So sterilize these, take this off, put this on, should do that underneath the uh, flame, okay, and take the sterile one and place the sterile one in the control. Oops, it's gone over the other side. That's done now. Now I'm done. I can turn the bunch burner off. Don't blow it out. Just turn it off at the gas. Seal up my container. Again, only two bits of tape. Okay. Seal up the container, write the initials of one of the people in your group, only on the corner, you can put it on the lid, but only on the corner, and then it's going to go into an incubator, just a heater basically, it's going to stay at 25 degrees for about 48 hours.